Hey everyone, it's coming back in. Guys, I want to tell you why the bad managers, finger over the camera, bad managers and uh, just really downright energy sapping people, they just never, they never prosper in, in business, in work. It just, it just doesn't happen. You know, if you've ever been in a team before and, uh, and, and one of your friends or a colleague or someone you work with suddenly gets promoted to being a manager. It's a common thing, it happens quite a lot, right? It might happen to you. You might have actually been the person I'm talking to. You listen. But in actual fact, you know, for most people, when that happens, you get these people, they, they, they get promoted up into these other roles. And you think, fantastic, that's great. I know them, this is great for them. I'm so happy, et cetera, et cetera. These people that you could have been associating with down the pub after work, um, sharing stories with, talking with, and, and all the rest, and all of a sudden, they get into this role of manager, and they adapt this alter ego personality, and they turn into this complete devilish kind of nightmarish person, and they're nothing like you knew them. Absolutely nothing like you knew them. And they think, I've got to turn into this horrible person, I've got to turn into this manager person to, uh, to, to come and obviously, you know, tackle the role that they're in, and, sever their ties with the staff that they've been associated with previously, so they're not seen in the same kind of guys as they were, like pally pally type of people. And they, they put this alter ego on to try and get the results, to try and show that they are worth worth their weight in gold in being employed into that post and that position. And, and at the end of the day, it doesn't work. It, it, it never works out in the long term. I mean, I, I remember once I was working, um, I'm not going to name companies or name names, obviously, um, but um, I remember one time I was working for a, a manager in a role. I used to have to travel about an hour and a half to get to the role. I know, I know boo hoo hoo. Um, but at the end of the day, it, for me, it was a bit of a bitch of a commute, to be honest with you. It was, it was two trains. Um, it was a nightmare, the length of time that I was traveling, the time that I'd be coming back. By the time I'd get home, you know, it'd be late, you'd have some tea, have some dinner, you're off to bed, back up again in the morning, doing the same thing all over again. It, it, it wasn't a great kind of commute to do, but the role, the role I loved, the nature of the work we were doing was amazing and the value it added to my CV, it was worth its weight, and, you know, it's just amazing sort of stuff. I knew it's worthwhile doing and that's why I took that on. It was a pay cut, everything. I took it on because it was the worthwhile thing to do for me, for my career, blah, 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 blah. But but in principle, the problem I had, keep stop putting that hand in front of that camera, guys. The problem I had with this particular person at the end of the day was the way in which she treated people. So it was the way in which they treated other people that were working for them. And it was a really, it was a really peculiar kind of set of circumstance that you would, we would do like, for example, we were doing a big change program. And as part of this change program, we, we had to obviously do these papers, documents, and everything else went out to people, the staff. Um, and you had to get all these things worked through with managers, get it signed off, get it agreed, that everybody was happy with the content, what you were doing, there was massive manager meetings that people went to and small manager meetings they went to just to get a draft put through to get to a final stage to offer it to people and actually run through a consultation process and um, with this particular process we, we had a template um, I developed it it was fine we put in all the details they were fine we worked with the manager who was the specialist in that particular area not me do the HR right but they were the specialist in this particular area and we worked with them to get this, this uh, put forward and the detail put in there, it was all correct and everything else. There were, you know when you write a document, you have bits and pieces in there, you, you highlight, you know you've got to add them, change them, make some of the small amendments as you go through, but it's a draft, that's what a draft is, right? And I remember uh, getting ripped a whole new one by this particular manager because it still had these bits in. We couldn't fill those in until it went to the wider meeting. It was just a ridiculous set of circumstances that literally there was nothing you could have done differently on review. I mean, normally when I say these things, I say, look at yourself, it could be you. It could be you that's the problem. But on this, we knew we had to go to the next stage meeting to fill in some of these details. It just wasn't going to be something we could do. And the timescales we were looking to do, it just wasn't able to fill this in until we got to the next stage. 
And it was just like being picky and difficult for the sake of it. Like, for example, someone's given me a document and I've got to be able to have an input on it. I can't, I can't leave it be as it is. It's got to have my input. I've got to have my fingerprints on this in some way. So I will bring up and mention any small little detail I can to show that I've done that. And that's what it felt like. But it wasn't just it wasn't just the pickiness. It wasn't just the the things that were being pointed out, which were just blatantly absurd. It was it was just it was the it was the nature, it was the mannerisms in which it was done. And the person had a really quirky kind of way of doing it, where it would be kind of quiet. They do a weird little giggle, and and this giggle was just it was bizarre. I mean, at the point in time when it happened, it happened in meetings with other people around the table. At the point it would happen, everybody would kind of go. Somebody else actually just hear that that's happened. That person's quietly spoken and then now a little giggle. <laughs> I think it's weird. And then came, then came the nastiness, the vileness in a delivery that would really just knock your energy out of your body. So by the point in time I've done this hour and a half commute into work, I'm, I'm, I'm tired, I've had to get up ridiculously early in the morning to get there, catch two trains, get a bus in some circumstances, just to get there as well as the two trains. You get there to this job and all of a sudden, you get this energy sapping just coming out of you from this person that you're working with, and then you've got to do it all again the next day and travel home, etc., etc. It was an absolute nightmare, and, and some people didn't have to work with them in this particular way. They didn't believe that this happened. It was just some crazy, crazy story you're coming up with. And then when they did eventually have to work with them, I got messages going, "I know exactly what you're talking about," and and people act in this particular way for a couple couple of common purposes. So you tend to get these kind of really bitter, twisted, difficult, awkward managers. And they do it because they think this gets results. It gets the job done. You know, being this way, I'm not here to make friends. This is work. I'm not here to associate with anybody. It's a job I need you to do your job. And these kind of nasty type of managers, um, they, they think it works to get the job done. Everybody is under pressure to meet their targets, get their work done, get the outputs from their teams. We all know that, right? But this is so short termism, it's, it's ridiculous. So for me, you know, it never works. It never works in the long run. And the reason it never works in the long run is, is for a couple of reasons. Number one is that, you know, it picks people up. People get the initial bolt of fear within them when managers start working this particular way and you get a slight like uppick from that kind of fear that people, you know, get cracking on different bits and pieces, working really hard because they're worried about what's going to happen if they don't. So you get a slight upturn for a short period of time. Ultimately, after that, people lose the energy. You're sucking the energy out of people. So, you know, over a longer period of time, a medium period of time, it's not going to work anymore. So people don't work through fear. Fear doesn't make people work harder. Fear makes people work harder in the short term, but in the medium to long term, it makes them want to just get the hell out of there. And, and that's what happens. People tend to vote with their feet. So you'll get a higher level of staff turnover. Um, and also people will just start to just not produce. They'll just be, whatever I do, however I do it, this is going to be the result. Why should I bother putting so much effort in to get the same outcome at the end of the day and it just demoralizes people you end up with a really horrible atmosphere within your teams um, the teams don't want to be there you get a really kind of bad attitude problem within you within your teams as well because they're not respecting the situation or the person at the end of the day and one of the crazy things is that these people are still every, the, the, the basics of dealing with employees at work couldn't be easier you do it every day of your life with, with, when you're going to the shops to buy a paper, to get a sandwich, whether you're catching a bus, a train, when you're talking to people on the street, your friends, your family, your, your children, your wife, your husband, brothers and sisters, it makes no difference. It's all based on relationships. It's about the things that make us what we are, human beings. So to go into some kind of managerzilla person, 
doesn't make any sense because it doesn't it doesn't resonate with anybody it's not human anymore it's not right so you've got to be able to engage and come across to the people that you're working with and that's when i talk about more rather than a manager style more of a coaching style and <coughs> and for me i think solely and, and wholeheartedly that you know if you have that approach and you actually have more of an understanding with your team and more sympathy. I'm not saying that if you have a bad performer, someone who's genuinely not doing well, their role um, and, and what have you, you get those, those people that you, you treat them um, all softly, softly as though they're a friend down the pub. I'm not saying that at all, but there's, there's horses for courses and you've got to play to your audience. That's a whole other video. But at the end of the day, being more human and working based on relationships with people, as a manager, you're gonna get in the long term so much more. People are gonna work with you and for you rather than in, in based on the fact that you're a manager. People get inspired by that type of manager. People work for inspiration. People don't work for fear. And, and, and that's the thing. I mean, just put yourself in, in their shoes. You know, you're spending so much of your time in the working environment. At the end of the day, if you're making people miserable and happy, it means just making the majority of their life awake a misery. Why would you do that to people? It's never going to work. And come back to my story, you know, with this particular manager, I remember once um, I didn't know them very well on a personal type of level. Never got to that. You know, it was very much, you know, work it. But I mean, we went to a leaving do once and they were going to be there. And I remember thinking, oh, I might just pop in for a drink. Um, I'm not going to stay. I mean, I love the people. The people were amazing, by the way. And um, I thought, I'll pop in for a drink and I'll be off. I'm not going to stick around for this because it's bad enough having it in the work time. I just want to get home after this. I've got this journey to do. I'll be done. And, um, and I, I really didn't want to stay for too long. And I remember I did stay <laughs> for a much longer period of time. But it was because the person's personality was so different to what they were, they were putting on in the workplace. They weren't the same person. It was, it, was, it was like a Jekyll and Hyde. They were completely different people. It was insane. It was like, what is going on? This, isn't, this can't be the same person. Why can't you be like this in the workplace? And it's so frustrating. And I just think ultimately, guys, you know, managers, those managers who, who manage through fear, who manage through the intimidation, who manage in a very autocratic kind of way, they never get the most in the long term out of their people. People that, that kind of work with you and come with you on that journey and believe in it, they follow a personality, they follow a person, they follow leaders, they follow coaches. And if you can adopt that style in your technique as a manager or in your business as an owner, then you'll be able to bring people on that journey with you rather than dragging them along on your heels against their will with you. And there's a big difference between those two personalities. Guys, remember, outstaff the competition. Stay great, be fantastic, have fun.